Welcome back everyone to another episode of the Journey to National Master. This episode is the round three of Open Queima das Fitas. And um, yeah, this round uh, was right after the last game that I showed you. And I had like one hour to have dinner and to prepare against my opponent. And to my uh, sadness and surprise, I got paired up against uh, Julian Hervé, which is a 1361 rated player. But the twist is that uh, he's an older gentleman and uh, people say, I'm not sure that this is 100% uh, true or accurate, but people say that he's, he was like 1900 uh, back in the day, uh, but it wasn't FIDE rated, it was like national uh, rating for France or something like that. But uh, that's not the thing that scares me the most. The thing that actually scares me the most, which actually is true, is that he beat one of my friends, Rodrigo Sarabande, which is like a 21 rated player, super strong, and he just crushed him. And uh, yeah, I was just uh, like super <laughs> tilted that... Like, of all 1300s that were in the tournament, I had to literally be paired up against this guy. Which, yeah, it's just super underrated. And, uh, I, you know, I'm gonna tell some backstory, which is funny. You know, I messaged my trainer, and I was like, oh my god, I can you talk for a bit? I need some advice, you know, I'm feeling nervous, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, as soon as he picked up the call, he was already, like, I know. You're gonna play against that guy that beat Saraband, like, bro. I already know. Is that the problem? And yeah, yeah, it's that the problem. Should I? And I was like, should I play uh, more solid, like uh, Knight F3? Should I go back to the Joe Babylon and just for this game? And he was like, bro. Oh my God, you're ridiculous. My trainer telling it to me, like, you're ridiculous. Just stop crying. Go out there, play E4, crush him, and it's gonna be super easy, bro. And I was like, Are you sure? You know. I'm 100% sure you're gonna like destroy him in like 30 moves or something like that. The match is not even gonna last more than one hour and a half. Just shut up and go play and just crush him, bro. Like, it doesn't matter that he beats Sereban. Like, it can happen. Like, everyone can lose and blunder. Like, you're just gonna crush him. No doubt about it. So, yeah, that was the backstory. And I was like confident that my trainer believed in me. And uh, let's see how the game actually went. Here, I played e4. My opponent uh, played c6, I played d4, d5, e5, and yeah, we have a Karokan, and uh, it was the first time that I actually played the advanced uh, Karokan with the white pieces in a tournament. So here my opponent uh, surprised me with c5, the main move is uh, bishop f5, which I was expecting. But okay, c5, I was very happy to see this because um, I actually play this for black. When I play the advanced Karakan with the black pieces, I always go for c5, which is a very nice um, move. Here I took the pawn and my opponent played knight c6. Uh, I wasn't really familiar with this move. I think this is not uh, the best one, uh, although I might be wrong. I think the main move is e6, but the engine really gives similar evaluations to both moves. So, okay, knight c6, I really didn't know any theory here. So I just played bishop b5, you know, pinning the knight. My opponent played a6, I happily took the knight. And uh, after b takes on c6, I played c3. Here, I felt like it was already a little bit tricky because uh, my first intention was just to develop a piece with knight f3. But I didn't really like that uh, my opponent had queen a5 check and uh, all of a sudden is regaining the pawn immediately. Like I have to block the check no matter how I block, knight c3 for example. It just takes the pawn and okay, we have equal material. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have a lead in development for sure. I can castle, but I didn't really wanna give up the pawn so soon at least. So I played c3, which I felt like was a very nice move, stopping this idea with Queen a5. Here my opponent played e6, which I felt like was very weird. Um, just blocking his bishop. And the whole idea of the Karokan is really to bring the bishop out of the pawn chain before he plays e6. 
So I was like, okay, bro, um, sure, e6. I just uh, play bishop e3, uh, defending the pawn on c5. My opponent played knight e7, knight f3, knight f5. And here I very aptly play bishop d4, inviting my opponent to take the bishop and to fix my structure. And okay, I don't mind uh, playing two knights versus two bishops in this type of position where I'm up a pawn and the position is closed. So okay, bishop d4 here and uh, my opponent played a5. Makes a lot of sense to play a5. He wants to develop the bishop to a6 and to put some pressure on my light squares. Here, thankfully, I'm in time to just castle. And uh, yeah, if any bishop a6, I can just play rook e1 calmly. And here my opponent uh, took on d4, which I feel like is uh, very helpful for me. Uh, and I think it's a very bad move for black. The reason is simple, like the knight on f5 is probably black's best piece. And it's really the only piece that black has developed. So just taking the knight and, uh, you know, helping my structure and helping me develop my knight on b1 is just uh, doesn't really make any sense in my opinion but okay my opponent was really mis misplaying the opening c takes on d4 bishop e7 knight c3 castles uh, knight a4 already uh, making a threat of going knight b6 attacking the bishop and the rook and here my opponent played uh, bishop a6 rook e1 and queen b8 and here okay um the most automatic and natural move is knight b6 but i didn't really feel like this was uh, anything good uh, the reason being that after uh, my pawn moves the rook to a7 i didn't really see a follow-up uh for white let's say i just play queen d2 attacking this pawn i feel like after bishop d8 uh it's not uh, really good that my knight is on b6 now it's very vulnerable uh, taking on a5 would lead to a very big mess after bishop e2, uh, queen c3 for example, bishop takes on f3, queen takes on f3, all of a sudden like third bishop takes on b6, pawn takes, queen takes. Here I feel like black's position is very very decent, I mean I'm up a pawn but I'm not gonna be up a pawn for a long time, you know. This pawn is weak, this pawn is weak, this pawn is weak, black is active. And yeah, it's my advantage just doesn't exist here. So that's the reason I didn't play a knight b6. Instead, I just played rook b1. Felt like it made a lot of sense uh, over protecting b2 in case I've moved my knight. And also in the future, maybe play for a3, b4. And it's always good to put the rook on the same file as the enemy's queen to create that pressure. Here my opponent played rook a7 and I played h4. Um, I think it's a very nice move. Uh, the idea with h4 is to play on both sides of the board. Uh, you know, I already have some pressure on the queen side, but I think I really want to also put some pressure on the king side. So h4, h5, h6 in the future can be a threat. Also just g3, king g2, improving my king and swinging a rook to the h file to you know just push the pawns and create some threats on black's king which can be very vulnerable in this structure in these french structures so okay h4 my opponent played bishop c4 b3 bishop b5 knight c3 attacking the bishop with tempo and actually bring the knight to a better square and uh, here bishop a6 and g3 I'm going for that idea of uh, that I just uh, explained. And here my opponent strikes with f5, which I felt like it was um, a mistake for sure. I felt like my opponent was already cracking under pressure. And the reason is that uh, I felt like black wasn't really ready for the position to open up. But, I mean, if black doesn't play f5 or f6, it's really hard to to suggest any other move because uh, f5 and f6 is really the only way for black to uh, create some counterplay. And indeed, um, the engine says that f6 and f5 are the best moves. So yeah, here 
uh, my opponent captured with the rook, which is the most natural, but indeed the engine says that it's the worst capture. Uh, yeah, the reason is simple, just my knight gets this e5 square, and uh, yeah, it's just a an amazing outpost where my knight is just completely dominating the position, and yeah, it's really tough. But the problem with the other captures that the engine set says that they are better is that, for example, after bishop f6, okay, uh, knight e5 doesn't really make much sense now that uh, it can be immediately captured, but bishop f6 drops the pawn on e6, and um, actually the engine says that this is uh, very good for black uh, compared to the other options because all of a sudden black gets a lot of counterplay. Uh, queen c8, queen e1, bishop d3, and uh, yeah, I have to move my rook, there's a lot of pressure on uh, my light squares, which are weak, and uh, even though black is down two pawns, he's doing uh, fine, but it's really hard for a human to, to see that, or for a player of our rating to, to see that um, deep idea, and okay, g takes on f6, also drops the pawn on f6 and blocks the rook, it's really weird. But okay, uh, my opponent takes uh, on f6 with the rook, I play knight e5, and here my opponent defends the pawn on c6 with rook c7, I play knight e2, with the idea of bringing the knight to f4 where it's gonna be very good. Here I'm not afraid of uh, exchanging uh, minor pieces. And here my opponent plays Queen f8, which I think is a very good move. My opponent is trying to set up a a little trap. Um, and yeah, it's kind of obvious what my opponent is uh, aiming to, to do. And I had to calculate. So let's see what I'm talking about. Of course, I want to play knight f4. But what I had to calculate, well, after I, you know, before I make this uh, knight f4 move is this obvious exchange sacrifice which is really just screaming to be played but here I I calculated that uh, this wasn't really that good for black uh, after g takes on f4 queen takes on f4 just uh, queen f3 and this solves all the problems now black is pretty much almost forced to exchange queens uh, and after this exchange of queens, but yeah, here my opponent is just down an exchange and uh, yeah, not uh, a lot of compensation for sure. So, um, the problem here that I just want to point out is that uh, black can't really take the spawn on d4 or the spawn on h4 for the same reason. Let's say queen takes on d4, he just gets mated with queen f7, king h8 and queen e8 check uh so yeah that's a very important detail and okay i wasn't really afraid of bishop takes on h4 here i think queen g4 just does the job uh yeah i feel like i'm doing very well here so yeah uh, no problems at all and after knight f4 my opponent surprised me with rook h6 which is a very weird move it's literally just a very obvious provocation and uh, my opponent is literally telling me to play the most obvious move which i played which was knight g4 but of course before playing knight g4 which is of course the most natural move just trapping this rook there's really no squares for the rook to move to and to be saved so it would just you know, lose an exchange. But here, uh, after knight g4, the intentions of my opponent, which I had to calculate, uh, were to, to take on h4. This is what uh, my opponent planned and what he saw and what he played, you know. Um, so, yeah, here I have to, to make a move, you know. Uh, I think what my opponent uh, just calculated is that after g takes on h4, queen takes on f4, that this position is very good for him. 
And indeed, uh, this position is all of a sudden equal. I lost all my advantage. Even though I'm up material, up an exchange, my position is super weak. Uh, this pawn is weak. This knight can really be weak. This diagonal is weak. The rook can come uh, quickly to the F file and my rooks here aren't doing much. And I have to be careful, my king uh, is very, very unsafe. And yeah, it's um, it's literally a double-edged position where I have literally no advantage and I'll probably have to defend accurately to not lose. You know, it's hard to move this knight and yeah, it's a very tough position. But here my opponent missed something that I saw in calculation, which um, after rook takes on h4, I'm not forced to capture the rook immediately. And I have this beautiful move that wins on the spot. This intermediate move, knight takes on e6. And this is just disaster, total disaster for black. The point is that I'm forking the queen, I'm forking the other rook. And this rook here is still hanging. And yeah, uh, black is just losing material by force. Here my opponent played... Uh, Queen f5, but simply now I can take the rook for free because, yeah, the knight is no longer hanging on f4, everything is protected, and uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful, beautiful tactic that uh, pretty much lent me a winning game. Here, even more sad for black is that the rook is still hanging, so my opponent had to play rook c8. And after rook e5, this is where I ended my calculation uh, before I played knight g4. And yeah, this is just completely winning. There's nothing. But okay, my opponent still uh, went on and tried to create some counterplay and fight. Queen g6. And here, you know, I spent some time calculating whether I should play knight f4, if I should play h5, if I should play... Uh, something else but i really didn't want to burn all the time on the clock that i had because i spent some serious time calculating uh the last two or three moves that were played four or five moves so okay here i just played uh, knight f4 and after queen f7 i brought the knight just back to g2 i really just wanted to regroup comfortably and safely i was still uh, cautious and playing uh, and spending some time calculating and uh, you know making sure I wasn't blundering I wasn't just taking it for granted you know and uh, yeah rook f8 here queen e1 putting pressure on e7 bishop and also adding some defense to f2 square and here after queen d8 after bishop d8 excuse me I played Queen e3, uh, with the idea of uh, tripling on the e file. But even though I was playing calmly and I was still, uh, you know, respecting my opponent's counterplay and making sure I wasn't blundering, here I completely blundered. Very bad blunder. Here, after queen e3, my opponent quickly sees. Queen g6 and I'm losing a piece. Uh, this is just a simple double attack which I completely overlooked. And I was super frustrated with myself like how can I be screwing this up and making it so sloppy? Like what the heck? Okay here you know just played rookie one. Queen takes on g4 and here my opponent was uh, you know gaining some confidence and he was definitely um, more happy than he was a few moves ago but thankfully here I kind of have something that simplifies the game into a winning position like I, I was up a rook and a pawn I was so winning that even after blundering a full knight I'm still completely winning which is crazy and funny rook e8 threatening to exchange pieces queen d7 and here a very accurate move uh, queen e6 check just pointing out that uh, if my opponent trades here which is probably the best move uh, you know I felt like this was uh, a 
just a winning end game and indeed it is it is a, a winning end game okay my pawn doesn't have to play um queen uh my pawn doesn't have to play king e f7 but uh, i was looking at something like this and uh yeah i felt like this was uh very much winning but yeah my pawn can play bishop e7 first maybe and yeah, although I wasn't very happy that I still had to convert this position, I felt like this had to be winning, because, come on, I'm up uh, an exchange and I'm still up a pawn. But actually, to my surprise, my opponent played queen f7, which is a horrible move, which makes my life 10 times more easy. And here after rook f8, takes on f8 check, my opponent is forced to take with the king, and all of a sudden I'm picking up a lot of pawns. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, picking up two more pawns, and now it's just a matter of trading queens and just pushing pawns and just easily winning. So yeah, here I was already like, okay, it's over, there's no way. My opponent played queen g6, and here I played queen f3 check, and after bishop f6, I played d5. Funnily enough, I missed a mate in four moves. Uh, yeah, it's kind of embarrassing, but it happens. Uh, yeah, here apparently I have a mate in four. You can try to pause the video and, uh, you know, find it. It's not that difficult. Uh, the move is queen a8 check. And uh, let's say my opponent blocks with the bishop here. I have... Queen takes on d8, check, and after king f7, queen e8, check, king f6, queen e6, checkmate. And if my opponent uh, plays the other legal move, king f7, here I just play queen e8, checkmate. So I missed that. Okay, I missed that, doesn't matter, I'm still winning, just pushing pawns, d5. Here my opponent played king g8, and here I find a very nice move, h5, forcing a queen trade, because if my opponent uh, leaves this diagonal, the bishop will be hanging. Okay, we traded more pieces, and here I just played c6, it's, um, it's over, there's nothing to be done. King f7, d6, king, bishop d8, Rook e5 attacking the bishop, bishop e6, c7, and after bishop f6, I captured the rook, and yeah, if my opponent captures, I'm gonna make a queen, if my opponent doesn't capture, I'm gonna make a queen, and here my opponent resigned, and I won the game, and uh, although it was very sloppy at some point, dropping a piece, I feel like I played extremely well, I managed to uh, see the tactical complications and calculate very properly and yeah it was uh, a game that i was very proud of and yeah my um my uh trainer was uh, right that uh, i was gonna crush him quickly and uh, yeah i think after let's see when i actually won the rook yeah i won the rook on move 27 so yeah i kind of crushed him in less than 30 moves so yeah my my trainer was right so yeah shout out to him and yeah i'm very happy so i won the third round and uh yeah with a very beautiful uh advanced karokan game hope you guys enjoyed this and i'll see you next video bye bye